So in this problem, we're told, suppose you adjust your garden hose nozzle for a hard stream of water. You point the nozzle vertically upward at a height of 1.5 meters above the ground. When you quickly turn off the nozzle, you hear the water striking the ground next to you for another two seconds. What is the water speed as it leaves the nozzle? So it's important to understand what we have going on here first before we actually try solving. So we have this guy and he's going to be firing this water. And so it kind of in a pattern like this, and we know he starts firing it 1.5 meters above the ground. So from where it starts to where it ends is 1.5 meters difference. And then we also know, or it says, you hear the water striking the ground next to you for another two seconds. So we know the time it takes, he's going to fire it and then it's going to go like this. And the time it takes for it to hit this bottom is going to be two seconds. So that's the information we know. And let's go ahead and get to solving. So this is basically a one dimensional kinematic problem. You can really just imagine this as one dimension and we're going to be working along the Y. So I'm going to call this the Y direction just because that's generally how we label it. But uh, what you do when you solve problems like these is you want to write out your five main kinematic variables. So the five main ones are going to be delta, whatever dimension you're working in. In this case, we're working in the Y direction. So I'm writing delta Y. We have the initial velocity V sub zero. We have V. We have A and we have T. So T is just time, uh, A is acceleration, V is velocity, uh, V sub zero is initial velocity, and delta Y is your change. So the way these things work is we identify what we're trying to find first. So they want us to find uh, the speed which uh, uh, the speed the water leaves the nozzle. So this would be the initial velocity because it's the beginning uh, speed. Uh, and that's what we're trying to find. So generally, I like to write V sub zero equals question mark because that's what I'm trying to solve for. And then I like to look, okay, what other variables am I given in order to actually solve for this? So now let's look at the problem and see what we're given. So do I know the change in the Y? So I know I start here and I know I end here. And they tell me the difference between these two are going to be 1.5 meters. So the change in it, we would be 1.5 meters, but Generally, if it's downwards, you label it negative. If it's upwards, it's positive. So we have a change of minus 1.5 meters because we go down 1.5 meters from where it starts to where it ends. So the change in y would be minus 1.5 meters. Uh, and then do we know the final velocity? So we actually don't know uh, the speed uh, of the water at this point. So we don't know that. So we're going to leave it blank. Uh, acceleration. So in this problem, the acceleration is going to be the acceleration due to gravity. So obviously gravity is going to accelerate things towards it and it's downwards. So the acceleration due to gravity is just a constant. You should know what it is. It's uh, 9.8 meters per second squared. Uh, but we like to label it negative because it's pointing downwards. Just as this was negative because it's down, uh, gravity is also negative because it pulls it downwards. And then T is the time. So how long uh, does this take? So we know it's going to take two seconds for it to hit the ground here, or it goes for two seconds. So essentially the time here is gonna be uh, two seconds. So uh, T is gonna be two seconds. And then now what you should notice uh, is in order to solve for a variable using the kinematic equations, you need to have three, uh, three variables. So in order to find V sub zero, we need three, which we do have three. So I know that I'm gonna be able to solve it just by plugging it into one of the kinematic equations. So now this is where it's useful to look up the kinematic equations. You should have them or should have them memorized, honestly, but you can look them up and determine which equation we're going to use. So the one we're going to use to solve this one is this equation right here. Delta Y equals the initial velocity times T plus one half AT squared. So this is probably the most common kinematic equation and the one we're going to use in this case. The reason I'm choosing this one is I know delta Y. I know we're solving for V sub zero, so it needs to be in it. We have the time and we have a. So we have every variable we just got to solve now. So now it's just a matter of plugging it in. Uh, delta y is minus 1.5. The initial velocity is what we're solving for, so I'll leave it there. The time is 2 seconds plus 1 half times a, which is minus 9.8, times t squared. So 2 squared is just 4, so I'm going to leave it like this. And so now it's just a matter of solving. So I'm going to go ahead and simplify. So minus 1.5 times 2 V sub 0. And then this is going to be minus. And then I'm going to see what that is equal to. So minus 9.8 divided by 2 times 4. This is minus 19.6. So I'm going to add this to the other side, uh, plus 19.6. So uh, minus 1.5 plus 
that's going to give you 18.1 is equal to 2 v sub 0 dividing by 2 you're going to get that v sub 0 is equal to this should be 9.05 but let me check yeah 9.05 so 9.05 and then the units for velocity are in meters per second so your answer to this problem is going to be uh, 9.05 meters per second and so the main takeaways are just make sure you write down your kinematic variables and you understand what you're solving for and what you're given so it's always good to draw a picture to help you and then you just plug it into a kinematic equation to solve for the variable you need in this case we have uh, v sub zero so uh, yeah this is going to be your answer to this problem and hopefully you found this useful.